Hello my soccer universe, let's review the action uh, in the Champions League for the match day 5 and uh, last week I was complaining that we have more or less half the teams already decided after 4 match days. Uh, yes, it was virtually, it, uh, it was very virtually 8, I think in reality it was only 7 uh, that have uh, really quali qual qualified and the good news is only 2 were added uh, now so we have actually quite some to play for on the last match day which I am personally very happy uh, that the group stage throws up a little bit of drama and we have two groups that are wide open so that also makes it super super interesting. Uh, one of the groups that's wide open is the PSG group, I'm wearing PSG, they as we'll see one away from home and let's look at the headlines before we de uh, dive, dive in. I mean the biggest one is and we will start in the review with that although it's not the first on the rundown, um, Real Madrid losing to Shakhtar again. I don't understand Real Madrid. Uh, we have um, Atletico Madrid cannot seal the deal against the makeshift Bayern squad. Um, so they have to face uh, last day drama and we already knew that there will be a last uh, day final in Amsterdam between Atalanta and Ajax. And then uh, in the other groups we have of course uh, the other he headlines that the group H is super wide open. We have three teams on nine points. You uh, cannot ask for more. Um, we have that Giroud scores four goal, scored four goals to secure uh, Sevilla, um, Chelsea. They are first place over Sevilla. And we have uh, also a last day matchup for a final spot between Lazio and Club Bruges because Lazio Although they were pushing hard, could not get a win at Dortmund, which then would have put Dortmund against Club Bruges. I also, uh, two things that have to be said that are remarkable. We have Marseille ending their losing streak with a win, uh, no, uh, nonetheless. And we have the first rush win in a European group stage this week. So those are smaller headlines. I was actually about to put this up into the main headline, but then I said, nah. Let's uh, stay with the Real and PSG story. PSG, of course, putting themselves in position. Okay, let's uh, talk about the games and we have to start at the... I think the biggest result was also one of the first ones uh, of this midweek. It was Schachter beating Real Madrid 2-0. Yes, Asensio hit the post early. Uh, there were like 15 minutes where you thought Real Madrid could do something, then... They just slowed down, slowed down, slowed down, slowed down, and there uh, was not much coming from them, to be honest. And then Schachter Donetsk, uh, the longer the game went on, the more comfy they felt. They went out attacking, and uh, Dentinho in the 57th gets the first goal. I don't know, I never really saw a huge wave of Real Madrid coming to try to break them down. I mean, it was what we saw on the weekend of Real Madrid already. And when Solomon makes it tone tone, it's done and dusted. Schachter Donetsk. I mean, this, there are two facts that you have to pull, pull in your head. Schachter Donetsk has been beaten on Agri, 10 nil by Gladbach. They just shipped four. And it could have been more if Gladbach wouldn't have uh, turned uh, turn it off a little bit. Uh, and then a week later, they beat Real Madrid for a second time. Maybe this time this, this the squad was not as, um, you know, makeshift as it was in the first game at, at Madrid, but beating Real Madrid twice and Real Madrid now being on the brink of being el eliminated from the group stage, uh, which never happened. That's, I think that that's the one uh, big team that never has been eliminated at the group stage. I mean, this you just have to get in your head. Uh, Real Madrid, absolute shambles. Uh, the defending, I don't know what's happening to those guys uh, and what's even worse is that Zidane has no explanation for it. So yeah, interesting stuff for sure. Um, the Lok Salzburg game at first I was shocked. What was Salzburg playing in? I mean I knew that they will have to pull out some uh, other jersey but this beige, orangey, pinky abomination that they put, I mean fits with uh, the, red, the Red Bull logo. On the other side, Salzburg thoroughly dominated the game, were only up by two. It should have been more game. I think Locke had one chance and yeah, the big Achilles heel for Salzburg is definitely their goalkeeper. Uh, that guy just does not 
give you any confidence whatsoever. Uh, but it was Mergin Berisha who, I mean, he was always a South Hospital, but he, he was alone for last uh, three years ago. So interesting to see him. He scores two goals in the first first half. The second one, I think, was a really nice finish uh, after uh, assist by Koita. Uh, the first one, uh, yeah, there, it could have been offside, but Salzburg should have scored more in the first, first half. Uh, second half, I mean, Lok could keep it a little bit more open, but it was still Salzburg um, controlling the game. Then they give away a stupid penalty, and I have to say the other one, Ramalio, he was a great defender within the Austrian league, but he's becoming more and more a liability, I have, to, I have that feeling. I'm thinking he's, he's a little bit like the David Luiz of Salzburg. In many, in many ways, he gives away a stupid uh, penalty, he then is converted, then uh, the goalkeeper hangs on to the ball, uh, and you know, big kerfuffle uh, F after that, and, and you think, oh, is Salzburg throwing that away? No, Adeyemi, uh, another nicely played count counter-attack makes it 3-1, seals the deal, and Salzburg sets themselves up to at least go now third in, in the group and depending on what Athletic against Bayern was doing they maybe have even a chance uh, to qualify from that group and they got the chance because Atletico Madrid Bayern Munich fielding a squad that yes they had some uh, name players in there but overall that would be a squad that, that, that they've put out in a cup com com competition I mean uh, Nübeling goal, Saar, Süle, uh, RMB Hernandez, Alaba, Martinez, Sane, uh, Musiala, Costa, uh, Chupo Moting. I mean, this is not, not a first grade Bayern squad. And Atletico Madrid showed that they are a much better, better team. And they uh, very quickly took control of that game. And Joao Feliz gave, gave, gives them the goal uh, in the 28th minute. And then Atletico Madrid does what Atletico Madrid too often does. The longer the game went on, the more and more they held back. They say, we can't get this 1-0 over the line. We don't need to exert ourselves. And that's their downfall. Because they give away a, a penalty that uh, Thomas Müller can convert it. It ends 1-1. Bayern, who actually were kind of begging, please end our unbeaten streak. No. Bayern still remains unbeaten for a whole lot of games in the Champions League. So, um... Atletico Madrid put themselves a little bit of trouble. We'll see that uh, later. They have to go to Salzburg and at least get a draw out of it, which I think is not beyond them. Uh, probably the game of the evening, of the Tuesday evening, was Gladbach against Inter, where um, I think Inter, for the first half, they were clearly the better team and took a uh, deserved lead through uh, to Dar Darmian after the Gagliardini assist. Uh, it was only late in the first half that Inter was kind of a bit shaky and that allowed player to come, come back after a nice Lazaro uh, cross, he can head it in. Uh, and, and it was actually funny because, you know, I, I watched on, on German TV the, uh, the conference where, you know, they switched back, back and forth and there was the guy who was atrocious from the Atalanta game, uh, saying, yeah, and how about the goal in Gladbach at the psychologically uh, uh, most opportune moment? And then the commentator from the Gladbach game was kind of the, yeah, 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 funny, there, you, if you score a goal there, there's not, no, 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 something like that. And then they score exactly that goal. And yeah, 1-1. One, one, um, and that actually gave Gladbach a little bit of a boost because they came out better in the second half. But they didn't really uh, take care of Lukaku, who then scores, uh, makes it 2-1 in the 64th, and 10 minutes later he makes it 3-1, and you think, game done. Um, however, right after, player pulls one back again, and then he even had the, uh, the, um, the equalizer scored, but it was taken off for a rather marginal offside. I was actually surprised that this was given as an offside. And so Inter can on. I mean, Inter had the chances to make it 4 or 4 2 as well. I think Inter on the balance of play deserved to win that one, but it was not uh, as straightforward as one would win. And Inter basically takes their last chance. They needed to win this one. If it a draw, they would have been out. Out. So uh, that sets up an exciting finale in that group. Uh, there's nothing really exciting in Group C. Uh, Porto and City agreed to make a nil-nil. Yes, 
uh, Gabriel Jesus had a goal this, this, this allowed through VAR, but there was really not much happening in that game. Uh, Marseille find themselves down to Olympiacos Pires, and that's very important because that is the away goal that will decide the head, head to head. And then they get two penalties. And I remember saying to my wife, Lou, look at Payet. The way he looked, I thought he will miss it. No, but he scores twice. Give Marseille that all important win uh, that they have been look long, long and look looking for, and they will not end the group stage in disgrace. As you know, I don't have much, much, much sympathies for Marseille, but. I'm happy that a former winner actually gets something. I think Marseille should perform much better. In my mind up here, Marseille should have challenged for um, some one of the spots in the knockout stage, but was not to be. Uh, Atalanta rather disappointed, uh, disappointing against Midtjylland. Honestly, Midtjylland should have led maybe by two goals. They hit at least once the bar. They get a goal through Schultz. Atalanta maybe having more of the game, but it does not look right. I mean, they just beat Liverpool. And then they had this flat performance against Verona. Now against Mitchell, and they thought they can do it. Yeah, just can't get there. They get the equalizer through Romero. Then they were pressing for the 2 1, but I think it would not have been served. Mitchell and picking up the first point. And Liverpool Ajax was also kind of a weird game. It was decided by a grave Onana error who let the ball go and then Jones can pull it into in, in the empty net. Ajax had chances, especially. Um, Early in the second half, I think, just when, when they were pressing, Liverpool gets it in. Uh, but other than that, on balance, I mean, the commentator said on balance, maybe Ajax slightly better. Um, uh, then I hear again uh, others saying that Liverpool rightfully won that one. So I guess on balance, probably a draw would have been all, all right. But Liverpool winning, uh, also, did, they didn't exert themselves too much to win that one as well. Pretty sweet jersey matchup, though, I have to say. Then we come to the games on Wednesday. Um, Krasnodar start Ren. Yeah, Krasnodar deservedly won with Markus Berg getting the win. First Russian win in a European group stage this uh, year. That is also something remarkable. Then the game of the evening was Bajak. Unsurprisingly, Bajak here. Uh, uh, surprisingly, no, not surprisingly. Surprisingly, Bajak here against Leipzig. Uh, and it never should, should have been. Leipzig should have been up by three or four goals at the half. Paulsen, which was a weirdly deflected shot uh, after Savica, um shot, uh, gives them the lead in 26, and Mukiele make, makes 2-0, and I think, yeah, that's that. But uh, Kavechi pulls one back right before the half. A uh, nice shot off a corner. And then again, the same story. Uh, Leipzig having control of the game. Uh, unfortunately, Upa Makano, which will be huge for them, he gets a yellow card, uh, which will see them, will see him banned for the next round. Olmo makes it 3-1, and you think, now the game is done. Tell it to Kavachi, who gets another one in the 72nd, and then scores a free kick in the 85th, it's 3-3. And the free kick never should have gone in, because if Sorloth just jumps a little bit, he blocks the shot. No, was not no to be. It's 3-3. Three, three. Leipzig scrambling. Uh, Justin Kleibert, for instance, come, coming on. And very late, Sorloth gets the winner. And the way it looked like to me, it must have been a slight deflection because the goalkeeper is not reacting. Or he didn't see the shot over there. But this was not a shot that I would think was uh, unsavable. But 4-3 for Leipzig. A game that never should have been uh, that, that close. Um, Sevilla, Chelsea, I loved what the reporter said there. Yes, Sevilla is playing in white and Chelsea in some color that hurts the eye. Really, why is Chelsea playing in those ugly jerseys there? I guess to sell some money and I think Giroud will now really, really, really uh, sell a few jerseys. He scores four. Uh, and what that Sevilla let themselves slaughter that, that much is just a disgrace. On the other hand, Chelsea's squad is really, 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 really good and they don't have many in injuries at the moment. So uh, watch out for Chelsea, I, I would say. Uh, but again, that, that group is not that exciting. Uh, Club Bruges gets an important win over Zenit, uh, ensuring them at least Europa League. Uh, the Cattelere getting the early goal, then he's fouled for a penalty. The Hans van Aken puts back and then Lang uh, makes it 3 0. And Bruges definitely deserved. Uh, that win very very clearly so so they are still in business and then Dortmund Lazio was one of those games where um, I think Dortmund was 
without Haaland, who injured himself in the warm-up. Uh, Dortmund actually was, I think, largely the better team in the first half. Lazio really hanging back and, and waiting for this important counter attack. With, at one, they almost will, will, will have scored, but Ajerbi A misses and B, he was offside. But there was one huge chance for Lazio there. But uh, Rafa Guerrero gives Dortmund, I think, a deserved lead at the halftime. Um, then the game is a lot more open because now Lazio needs to come. Uh, but Dortmund can keep Kinder Bay and then Schultz, who just came on, uh, fouls Milinkovic Savic, like, uh, let's say, touches Milinkovic Savic sufficiently enough that a penalty is probably the, uh, the, the correct decision. And Immobile scores one. And then Lazio gets more and more in, into the game. And it really needed Birki to pull out some saves because Lazio uh, had quite the chances. Uh, I think there was an immobile shot and there was a, um, a nice free kick from the side that he pulled, pulled out and another one. I mean, Lazio was really pressing for the win because that win would, would have secured them uh, ad advancing to the next round. They only get the 1-1, which does it for Dortmund and Lazio now has a finale at home to Club Bruges for the final spot. Uh, Barcelona, no trouble with Ferran Guaros playing in the fourth jersey from last season. And I am liking those more and more and more. I just have enough Barca jerseys at the moment, but I really like it. It was already in the first half. Griezmann, really nicely played. Uh, Braithwaite gets one in uh, off a Dembele cross, and Dembele himself make, make, makes a goal. No Messi. So uh, Barcelona, actually, given all the injuries they have, and yes, it was only Ferran Guaros, but it doesn't look all that bad as well. Uh, similar story with Juve, where Chiesa was the a big one, who... Uh, Scores one and then is involved in the other two, uh, assisting the third, third one and in the build up for the second one by Ronaldo. He was also, he gave to get across, it was then a little bit deflected by Morata. So, yeah, um, maybe a little bit too high the scoreline, but still very well deserved. And Ronaldo gets a 750th goal. Yep, needed to mention that one as well. And that leaves us with the big one. Uh, Manchester United against PSG, which was a very nervy, crazy game where PSG uh, gets a quick goal through Neymar. That was actually really ni nicely played and uh, credit to uh, Moise Ken for not taking away the ball from Neymar uh, ahead of the 1-0. PSG really controlling most of the, of the game. PSG playing in similar jerseys like these with uh, navy pants. However, on the current jersey, this is not navy blue. This is a little bit lighter blue. So a li slight uh, mismatch. But I have to say, I really like the jersey match uh, matchup overall in the game. I think uh, the PSG combination actually look quite good overall. United get the equalizer through a rash, deflected Rashford shot, but uh, that was not in the cards, I felt, at that that, that, that moment. And probably uh, before that, many and I should have come down by 10 men for it, uh, at, at least attempting ahead. But I don't know. I mean, yes, Paredes is going down rather easily. Maybe that's what swayed the referee to only give a yellow card. Um, but Fred was clearly on the books and he had a rough change. I mean, Honestly, Solskjaer would have, should have taken off Fred at halftime to protect the player. And that would come back to bite them. In the second half, United actually was uh, at, at the beginning uh, better and had a big chance by Cavani, who was lobbing the goalkeeper and then it hits the crossbar. Um, then Marquinhos, I think, had a, a goal ruled out already, um, rightfully so. And then he makes... on. No, uh, he, no, no, he had a chance where he hit the crossbar and that was kind of the sign. Yeah, now it, the game shifts back to um, PSG again and Marquinhos then gets the goal, which could have been offside, but was decided not being offside. And then a minute later, right off the kickoff, uh, Fred cannot control the ball, uh, makes a challenge, he gets to the ball, but it's such a rash challenge that the ref gives, gives him a second yellow and he's sent off. And while you didn't necessarily feel that PSG was a man more, it also made the work that much harder for United, who, um, yeah, could not really, were pushing, but could not really. And then Neymar um, late in an attack where he steals the ball himself, he gives it off, um, then the, the ball goes over Rafinha, who plays it to Neymar. It was a beautifully played 3-1 and PSG puts themselves in really, really prime position to advance with that win because that third goal 
also gives them a head-to-head -head over Man United just in case and that could also be decisive for the draw. So let's look at where we stand. Um, as I said, Bayern clear through. Atletico Madrid not through yet, they need a draw in Salzburg um, and given what squad Bayern will be playing that could also mean that Atletico needs, needs to play full, could beat Salzburg and then Locke could beat Bayern which I don't expect but you never know. Group B, I was surprised about the chances there because Gladbach plays Real Madrid but maybe um, because of all the head to head it's still Gladbach and Real Madrid who have the advantage here but it's a super 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 tight group. Gladbach and Real Madrid are in better position. Gladbach needs a draw, Inter needs a win, uh, then it should look good. Um, but, you know, lots to be played out there. Uh, City and Porto are through, Liverpool is through, Atalanta Ajax, it's a game in Amsterdam that decides who goes ahead. Atalanta, have, due to, they only got to, got to one point, I mean, you would have expected that they even get, get a win. It doesn't really matter for the game, it was all coming down to that one game. Uh, in many ways anyway and yeah Atalanta needs a point and then they are through otherwise Ajax will go through and for me it's really hard to pick here uh, which one of those two I would want to go through. Uh, Group B is all decided in every regard Kras, Kras is going to do to uh, Euro, Euro, Europa League. Uh, Dortmund is now really through this group. Lazio has a home game against Bruges needs a point. Barcelona Juve are through they have a head-to-head who will go first place and maybe we get another Messi Ronaldo match matchup that we're all craving for. And then on the last group we have PSG needing to pin Pajaksha here. Then they're through and then it's between United and Leipzig which could be a real fun game because both teams are not all that great out the back. Uh, as for the overall chances, uh, Manchester City overtook Bayern in the rating and now for the first time since I'm doing this it's Manchester City in uh, the top favorites. It's still the Guardiola trifecta up there but do you see Chelsea moving up a little bit, PSG also moving up, Juve moving up and all the except Barcelona, all the other Spanish teams are now not in the top eight anymore because they all have not qualified yet. Uh, already said what's in the next round we have um, early on the Lazio Club Bruges one is an interesting uh, mat matchup for sure. Uh, then uh, Barca against Juve, we get Messi Ronaldo hopefully and then uh, Leipzig against Man United, I think that's fun. Uh, then we have early kick of Ajax against Atalanta that's also an important one. Uh, then Salzburg against Atletico Madrid. Then anything in Group B is worth your time and nothing of Group C is worth your time. So that was the Champions League. Let me know what you thought about the games this week. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to enjoy me some more and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get, I get updated whenever something is happening in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!